But let's then go into a little bit more detail about what can actually increase this hydrostatic pressure of the capillary. And one is going to be any kind of kidney failure that leads to water retention. So if the kidneys can't get rid of the fluid, that water is going to back up in this arterial and that's going to increase my HPC. Hyperaldosteronism, or really anything that causes hypernatremia, too much sodium, can cause increased retention of sodium, which is going to cause increased reabsorption of water and too much fluid over here, which is going to push these pressures up. High venous pressures. So this fluid has to flow through and out, and if anything's blocking this vein, the pressure is going to build back up into this capillary and force the fluid out, causing edema. What can do that? Heart failure. So in heart failure, the heart can't push the fluid along enough, it starts backing up in the veins, and again, that's going to back up into the capillaries. Venous obstruction. Any kind of blockage or varicosity in this vein can cause the fluid to back up. Also, you can get failure of venous valves. So they're valves that are in veins that look kind of like this. They kind of look like semilunar valves. So fluid can go this way and open up the valve, but if fluid comes this way, it actually ends up closing the valve. But if that valve fails, then fluid can come back in this direction and build up. Another one here is failure of the venous pump. Now the venous pump, or sometimes it's called the skeletal pump, or the muscle pump, is when muscles contract on this venule in this vein, it pushes the blood up through that valve. So we need vessels, so we need skeletal muscle to contract down here to push the blood up through. If it doesn't push it back up, it's going to back up into this capillary. So paralysis of muscles. If you have to immobilize a body part, I'm thinking in coma, or I'm thinking if there's a broken bone or something like that. And the other one, I guess, is that failure of the venous valve. The last thing is decreased arterial resistance. Now this one seems a bit counterintuitive because I'm saying this arterial is widening out and you'd think that that would decrease HPC because we've got a wider vessel. But the actual thing that's happening here is in a normal arterial that's going to narrow into that capillary, so this is the arterial narrowing, narrowing into that capillary, it's going to be an increase in pressure right there as you're going from a, a larger vessel to a smaller. But if we decrease arterial resistance so that this arterial widens out considerably, now we're going from a large diameter vessel into a small capillary, and that's going to really, really increase pressure, and that will increase our HPC. So while vasodilators suggest that it would actually decrease edema because you're lowering blood pressure, it can actually cause edema because it increases pressure right at the junction between the arterial and the capillary. Decreased plasma proteins. The first one can be decrease or loss of urine, sorry, loss of protein in urine. And there can be a variety of kidney conditions that can cause you to lose protein in your urine. You can lose protein via denuded skin. So if you've had a burn, or a wound, it's going to seep fluid, and that fluid is going to be high in protein, and so you're going to lose protein that way. The third one can be failure to make proteins. And as I said before, that can be because of liver failure, 
because the liver is making that albumin, and if the liver is failing, it's not making that albumin, that's going to affect our OPC, make it smaller, and we're not going to have as much force drawing fluid back in. Serious protein or caloric malnutrition. Something like a B12 deficiency because you need B12 to make methionine and you need methionine to make proteins. So that would decrease protein production. Increased capillary permeability. Any kind of immune reaction that release histamine. Because histamine stimulates inflammation by opening up the capillary permeability. Any kind of toxin, bacterial infections, vitamin deficiency, because then you're not making, sorry, vitamin deficiency. Yeah, I wanted that D. Vitamin deficiency, because then you're not making the things you need to make that capillary strong. A big one is vitamin C, because vitamin C is necessary for collagen. And collagen is in the body's duct tape. It holds things together, and so it's going to hold that capillary together. If you don't have vitamin C, you don't have collagen, and this capillary is going to be weakened. Burns. And then prolonged ischemia, lack of blood flow, can make that capillary weakened because it doesn't have the nutrition that's necessary to be healthy and to be strong. Blockage of lymphatic return. Cancer. If you have Hodgkin's disease or non-Hodgkin's disease, this is filling up with cancer cells. That's going to impede the flow of fluid, and so that's going to cause edema. Infection. So this is the home to the immune system, so you're going to draw in white blood cells to anything that's in here. You're going to draw in inflammation to anything that's in here. So if there's an infection in here, you're drawing additional fluid here, you're drawing additional white blood cells in here. And that's going to prevent the flow of that fluid out. And again, if you can't drain this fluid out, it's going to back up and cause edema. Surgery. The main one I think about is sometimes lymph nodes are removed, especially in breast cancer, to make sure that any cancer that's in there is removed. But if you don't have those lymph nodes, you've disrupted the flow of the lymphatic vessel. Generally, they'll grow back, but until they grow back, you've got a blockage, or rather a discontinuity, of the lymphatic system, which means this fluid can, does not have a path to escape. And then you can have congenital absence. Or abnormality. Okay, so that's a fairly hopefully a fairly concise but complete description of edema, what causes the pressures, what causes fluid to get in and out of the capillary, and what can go wrong to cause the more pressure to leave than to get back in. Thank you.